Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and welcome to Lecture 31 of Advanced Linear Algebra. In today's class, we're going to introduce two new theorems concerning positive definite matrices. The first of these theorems is going to make it easier to determine whether or not a matrix is positive definite, at least in certain circumstances. And the second of these theorems is going to tie together positive definite matrices with topics that we covered earlier in the course. Okay, so to motivate the first of these theorems, making it easier to determine whether a matrix is positive definite or not, let's try to determine whether or not this matrix is positive definite. Well, let's try to show that it is positive definite. The answer is there, okay? And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to show that it's positive definite using sort of the most efficient method that we already know, which is based on something we learned last class. We're going to show that all of the eigenvalues of this matrix are strictly positive. That's one way to show that a matrix is positive definite. It's the most efficient. It's the easiest way that we've seen so far. Okay, so let's do that. Let's compute the characteristic polynomial, set it equal to zero. Okay, so determinant of a minus lambda i, well, it's just this, subtract lambdas off the diagonal. And we're just going to use our explicit formula for the determinant of a three by three matrix. So, you know, this thing with three forward diagonals and then subtracting off three backward diagonals. And it ends up looking like this. Okay, so for example, I mean, the main forward diagonal, two minus lambda times two minus lambda times two minus lambda, gives you this term here, two minus lambda cubed. All right, and now let's simplify this and factor it so that we can find out what the eigenvalues are. Okay, so the trick that we're going to notice is that, hey, this plus i and this minus i, they just cancel out. And then all the terms that we're left with, they all have two minus lambdas in them. So we can factor a two minus lambda out of everything. And when we do that, what we're left with is two minus lambda times, well, what's left over? Two minus lambda cubed just becomes a two minus lambda squared. And then over here on the right, what's left over? Well, there's just a minus one, a minus one, and a minus one left over. So minus three altogether is left over after you factor two minus lambda out of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've already got this as a factor. That's great. I want it factored as much as possible so that I can see its roots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to expand, expand that term out as a quadratic though. Okay, so if you expand out this bracket and simplify, you're going to get lambda squared minus four lambda plus one. Okay, now to find the roots of this entire uh, polynomial here, well, we can see that lambda equals two is one of the roots. So that's one of the eigenvalues of the original matrix. And we can find the other two roots just by applying the quadratic formula to this quadratic term over here. So that's what we're gonna do next. And we get lambda equals, you know, it's negative b plus or minus root b squared minus four ac all over two a. So we get that expression here and we're just gonna simplify and it ends up being two plus or minus root three after you simplify a little bit. Okay, now that we found the eigenvalues, what we want to do is we just want to determine, well, are those all strictly positive? Are they all bigger than zero? And some of these are easy. Lambda equals two. Yeah, two is bigger than zero. Great. Two plus root three, that's also bigger than zero, right? Positive thing plus positive thing, bigger than zero. Okay, so the only one that we have to be a little bit careful of is two minus root three. And we can see that that's positive as well, even if you don't have a calculator, because two is just root four. So it's root four minus root three and bigger root minus smaller root. Well, yeah, that's strictly positive. Okay, so we conclude that, yeah, all of these eigenvalues are strictly positive. So A really is a positive definite matrix. Okay, so up until now, that's the easiest method that we've seen for showing that a matrix is positive definite. And I mean, in lots of cases, that actually just is the easiest method. But there's some cases where something called Sylvester's criterion is what you want to try instead. Sometimes this is a little bit easier. Okay, so let's go through this. What it says is if you've got a Hermitian matrix, got to be Hermitian for us to be able to talk about positive definiteness in the first place, remember? Okay, so if you've got some Hermitian matrix, then it's positive definite if and only if the determinants of each top left k by k block is strictly positive, okay? No matter which k you pick. So the top left one by one block of that matrix has to have positive determinant. The top left two by two block of that matrix has to have positive determinants. The top left three by three block has to have positive determinants and so on all the way down to whatever the size of the matrix is. The whole matrix also has to have positive determinants. And if all of those have positive determinants, great, your matrix is positive definite. Okay, so it's a little bit of a mouthful and it uses sort of ideas that are somewhat different from what we've seen so far in this course. So let's go through an example. Okay, we're not going to prove Sylvester's criterion. The proof is in the textbook if you're curious, but we're going to skip over it, save a little bit of time and go straight to an example. Okay, so let's show that that exact same matrix that we worked through on the previous page, let's show that it's positive definite again, but using Sylvester's criterion. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to highlight the different matrices that we have to check the determinants of here. Okay, so here in in uh, in green, I highlighted the top left one by one block. We have to check the determinant of that one by one matrix. And then this sort of red and green block, we also have to check its two by two determinant. And then we have to check the three by three determinant of the whole thing. So we have to compute three determinants 
to, to determine positive semi-definiteness of the matrix. So let's do that, okay? Starting with the top left one by one block, determinants of, you know, the one by one matrix whose only entry is two, well, it's two, okay? If you have a one by one matrix, the determinant is just the entry in that matrix. And sort of the point here is, yeah, two is bigger than zero. So we're happy with that part. Next up, the two by two top left block, okay? So this time the matrix is just two minus one, minus one, two, okay? And let's compute the determinants of that. We have explicit formulas for two by two matrices, right? It's just forward diagonal minus backward diagonal. So four minus one, which of course equals three. And again, three is bigger than zero, okay? So we're happy with that, good. Two out of three determinants checked, they're both positive. Lastly, we have to compute the determinants of the entire three by three matrix. Okay, so we just go ahead and do that. And again, we've got an explicit formula for three by three determinants, you know, all the forward diagonals, the first one gives you eight, the next forward diagonal gives you I, next forward diagonal gives you minus I, and then the three backward diagonals each give you two, but you subtract them off. Okay, so, and then at the end of the day, while well, these are gonna cancel out, you get eight minus six. So overall, the determinants is two, which again, hey, that's positive, we like that. So because all three of these determinants of top left sub, sub matrices, because those are all strictly positive, we conclude that yeah, A is a positive definite matrix. Okay, so for some matrices, particularly matrices that have lots of zeros in them, this is an easier method of determining whether or not the matrix is positive definite, okay? Now, one thing that you're probably wondering about is what about positive semi-definiteness, okay? Most of the theorems from the previous lecture, we had sort of a positive semi-definite version of the theorem and a positive definite version of the theorem, and they were just sort of very analogous to each other. This is one of the few cases where actually things get a lot messier if you go to positive semi-definiteness, okay? So we're not going to cover it, okay? There is a version of Sylvester's criterion that tests for positive semi-definiteness, but it's not as easy as what you're probably thinking. In particular, one thing that you might think to try is, well, if uh, you know the determinants of the top left k by k blocks are just bigger than or equal to zero, does that imply positive semi-definiteness? It turns out, no, it doesn't. It's more complicated than that. You need to check more determinants than just these top left ones, okay? So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna cover the positive semi-definite version of Sylvester's criterion. Okay, so that's our new computational technique for today's lecture, but we're gonna go through one more new theorem, uh, and this one's more theoretical in nature, and the point of it is to sort of tie together this part of the course with something that we saw earlier in the first half of the course. And in particular, we're gonna see that positive definite matrices, they're tied very intimately with inner products, okay? So the idea here is think back to uh, it was in week five, we had, you know, all sorts of results about inner products. And one of them said that every inner product on Rn or on Cn, it has a particular form. It looked like this. This was the result. It was corollary 5.7 in week five's, week, in week five's notes. Okay, it said that every inner product uh, on Rn or Cn, it looks like, well, just sort of a sandwiching with a, a certain matrix in the middle, right? It just looked like V star times P star P times W, where P is just some invertible matrix, okay? Well, now that we know more about positive definite matrices, well, now that we know about them at all, we know that every matrix of the form P star times P is positive semi-definite. And furthermore, if P is invertible, like it is in this theorem, then we actually know that P star P, well, that's exactly what a positive definite matrix looks like. Okay, so if we just rephrase this theorem using terminology that we have at our disposal now, what we get is this, theorem 8.3. So we don't actually have anything to prove here. We've already proved it, it's just changing terminology. Okay, so here's the statement. You have an inner product, well, on Rn or on Cn, it's an inner product if and only if there's a positive definite matrix such that, well, that function, that inner product has the form V star times A times W, okay? So it just looks like the usual dot product, you know, if it would be the usual dot product if it was just the identity matrix in there, which is positive definite, by the way. But I mean, in general, you can sort of shake things up a little bit and how much you can shake things up is exactly, well, via a positive definite matrix. That's how much you can sort of squidge things around on the inside there. Right, so again, yeah, where this comes from is just corollary 5.7 from a few weeks ago, um, and the fact that every positive definite matrix, um, positive definite matrices are exactly the ones that can be written in this form P star P where P is invertible. All right, so that'll do it for today's lecture. I will see you soon for lecture 32.